Dear Stationeers aficionados, today I want to answer a question that came up in the comments section. Very interesting question as it turns out. What do you do if your portable gas tank, the oxygen tank that comes with your lander, has run out if it's completely empty? Uh, how do you get more stuff in there? Um, they uh, tried putting some uh, oxide in there, but no, it didn't work. And uh, that's surprising to me. So um, I tried that myself and yeah, that's not, it's not that simple really. So let's see what happens. The base is currently evacuated. Nothing in here and nothing in there. Uh, by the way, you can dunk your oxygen canister in here and let go and then take it out again right quick to top it up. Currently not useful because uh, we want to do an experiment with an evacuated tank that would equalize the pressure. Um, so both would get something. Yo, now there's ice in there. But it's not melting. But whoever has tossed down ice in an evacuated room in Stationers has learned you need to give it some kind of trigger. Because uh, if they're not too polluted by Hollywood, they know that a vacuum doesn't have temperature. And so... Oh, it's melting! Yeah, success! Uh, no. Not success. It's only melting into the room. That's stupid. That's we, we, we wanted the opposite. Why is this happening? Let's try on the outside then. Where there's true vacuum from all sides. Nothing, 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 and nothing. So, oxide stack. 50. Not melting. Well, we know that already. Now let's give it some trigger inside the tank. A little bit of gas in there. Now let's see what happens. Aha, it's melting. Okay. Now we got what we wanted. This is how you fill the tank. So that answers the question. But while we're at it, let's answer a few more questions around the general topic. How high will this fill? So we got over a thousand moles of oxygen in here, some nitrogen, so we need a nitrogen filter too, or you have to uh, flush your suit every once in a while, which is bad for your lungs. And inelegant, we're stationers, we don't do that except if we have to. So we have 3.6 megapascals. 3.6 megapascals in there. And uh, nothing was on the outside. I mean, now something's here since I'm opening it, but I mean, it melted, everything melted into the inside. We had to give it some reason to melt, but it did melt. Are we done? Is it finished? Nothing more. Okay, let's close it then carry to, to the inside again and then show the big difference. Nothing on the inside, something on the outside. Let's give it something on the inside too. Alright. And then some oxide. It's melting and it's melting to the inside but it appears it's also melting to the outside which was kind of expected we had 3.6 megapascals before and now we have 1.8 1.8 times 2 is 3.6 so exactly half of it melted to the inside and exactly half of it melted to the outside since both sides had a trigger for melting that is very weird and very interesting to know i would say now, while we're on the topic of filling tanks in a pinch, I just whip this thing up. No atmosphere in here. Here is the canister that I brought. Nothing in there either. Let's toss down some oxide. 
It doesn't have reason to melt, but I have uh, my jetpack and that has some warm gas and it's only nitrogen. I could also just uh, turn on my welder. That doesn't work with the arc welder, which you will build later, but the nice gas welder can do that. Problem is it also causes some pollution. Not much, it is actually breathable. It's below the threshold, I think. Except after a while, I guess it would build up in the suit and then you will have the same problems, the same as with nitrogen. So you would need a pollution filter. Um, okay, is it melting? No, it's not melting. What's the reason? We have to wait a little bit longer, just a little bit. And I think one kilopascal is indeed the reason, uh, uh, the difference. Yep. Maybe that was coincidence, but anyway, one kilopascal and then it started kicking off. So here we have a canister and I can ho hold that here and open it. But I can also open it in the world and it will stay open. Now I just filled that thing with uh, some oxygen, actually. We have more oxygen. Okay, let's put more oxygen in there then. Room pressure is at over a megapascal already. This door is rated for 500 kilopascals pressure differential, so I guess for some reason that wasn't implemented. And did you notice on the outside there's uh, there's a frame? But I could put the door in here, no problem. I mean, this door is basically in the way of nothing and nothing gets in its way. You can place actually a door like this here and here and here and here in a circle and they will all work. You can so you, so you can make a labyrinth and some of them will be wel welded shut, some of them not. And then someone else has to find their way through them without tools. <laughs> Maybe some color coding that they can decipher, that would be interesting. So now we have uh, 2.3 megapascals. And can I breathe that? My helmet is still closed, so it matters what I breathe. Yes, I can. This is breathable gas. Right. <laughs> so, how about welder fuel then? Is it all melting? Yep. What do we get in the canister? Not much, because since I picked it up, it was auto-closed. Okay. This will not be a good mixture. We need a mixture of 66% volatiles. Shut up. 60% uh, volatiles, 66% and 33% O2. Uh, that's not what we're getting here. But maybe it'll do. So let's remove the nice red bottle here, which by the way has the exact mixture because it came with a lander. And put this one in and open the door. Suit damage. Toxin critical. Huh. Toxin detected. I guess I hit my head. Let's work on that general gas problem. Oxygen critical. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, now we have the welder um, torch. Where is it? Here. Let's see if it welds. Okay, the flame is there. That works too. So, see, that answers all questions around that topic, I guess. See you later!